this is Steve Bartlett. Great to be with you again. Again, I hope these lessons are encouraging you and stretching you and just giving you some new ideas of how to be more effective in the gospel sharing. Again, I want to encourage you to do the work of an evangelist. But you know, today I want to talk about something that's just as important, and that is the disciple-making aspect of evangelism. Lesson number nine here today, I, I entitled this, The Basics of Disciple Making. And again, I'm not going to be able to get into a whole lot in any real depth with you about this, but I think all of us realize the goal is not just to make a convert, but the goal is to actually bring someone to a place of maturity in God. One of the reasons that we started Abundant Life Christian Center back in Chicago, that was goodness, I don't even know, 22 years ago, was because we wanted to do more than just go out and conduct evangelistic events. I wanted to see people grow and mature in their relationship with God. You see, disciple-making is the real goal of evangelism. And you know what? I could take it even farther. It's not just disciple-making that we're after. It's making disciple-makers. Think about that for a minute. Is it enough just to raise someone up to where now they've learned to walk with God? Isn't real the real call and the real commission to raise up people who will now do this in the lives of other people? Well, I want to read a couple of verses of Scripture here this morning or this evening or whenever it is when you're watching this. And I want you to listen to these words and these, again, the way Jesus phrases this. In the King James Bible, and you'll see this highlighted there on page 61 of your manual, Go ye therefore and teach all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Ghost. Teaching is the word that's being used in the King James. But listen to the New King James. Go therefore and make disciples of all the nations. How is it that one translates teaching and the other make disciple? Well, let me tell you, it's like this. They're saying the exact same thing. To make disciples is to teach them all things that Jesus has commanded. And lo, I am with you always, even to the end of the age. You know, when Jesus said back in verse 18, the all authority has been given to me in heaven and earth, Go ye therefore, what he's really doing is he's, he's turning his followers into his representatives here on earth. And what's the thing that Jesus tells them to do? Go make disciples. Go teach the people all the things I've taught you. You go and teach others also. You see, evangelism and discipleship cannot be separated. And I certainly hope that all of you that are going through our discipleship manual with me will realize it's not about just putting, quote-unquote, notches on some belt of these are the people I've led to Jesus and I've talked them into praying a prayer with me. That's, that's not what we're after, guys. What we want to do is to raise people up in maturity in Christ and see them become active participants in God's church and even beyond that, disciple makers themselves. What happens far too often is that people literally just sort of substitute sitting in a church building, passively listening to a pastor teach a sermon and we think somehow this is discipleship. Well, it's really not. And you know, there's, there's two parts of this great commission. The first one is to go into all the world and make disciples. And we find that in Matthew's account. And listen to this. I'm reading now out of Luke 24. Jesus said that repentance and remission of sins should be preached in his name to all nations, beginning at Jerusalem. And that you are witnesses of these things, and behold, I send the promise of my Father upon you. 
but tarry in the city of Jerusalem until you're endued with power from on high. Can I say this as plainly as I can? You can't make disciples really without the power of the Holy Ghost in your life to really see people not just saved, but discipled and set free and brought up into maturity. You know what? The supernatural work of God simply cannot be done without the supernatural power of God to empower us to do it. I've written a great quote here. We simply cannot expect to fulfill the Great Commission in and through our own ability, power, or authority. But with his power and authority and his ability, I can expect to, to fulfill the Great Commission at least as much as it relates to the sphere of influence God gives me in my life. And I really hope that every one of you will realize that God is calling you not just to preach the gospel like it's in isolation, but to take that even farther in making disciples. And listen to this Great Commission one more time. Go make disciples of all the nations, of all the people groups. Ethnoi is the word for nations here in Matthew chapter 28. All the nations. That means everywhere in the world. All the different ethnic groups, the different, the different people groups. The command applies to every follower of Jesus that has ever lived in all the world Throughout all time, this is what Jesus commanded his church, to go into all the world and make disciples. While some of you are going to have a real gift in evangelism to bring people to Christ, it's just as critical to develop in your life and in your heart the ability to bring people to maturity in Jesus and what we call discipleship. You know, with these instructions, Jesus states both the goal and the responsibility of the church. The goal of the church is to go into all the world and make disciples of all the peoples of earth. And not only is this the goal, but this is the responsibility. Who's going to do this if the church doesn't do it? Who's going to win your city? If the church doesn't win your city, it simply won't happen. So again, we see both the goal and the responsibility. Now, I've broken it down a little bit further, and you can see this on page 62. The church is to go into all the world and proclaim the message of Christ as he has revealed it in his own teachings. And the primary purpose of this great commission is seen in the only direct command in this passage. And you know what the command is? Make disciples. Go teaching and baptizing are all helping verbs that show us how we go about making disciples. I've got to go. And really, in the Greek, the word is going. Going make disciples of all the people teaching them, baptizing them. These words are helping verbs to describe the only real command to make disciples. Now, I've written here something that, that is going to be controversial for some of you evangelists that are just chomping at the bit. But hang in there for a minute and listen, because this is the truth. Many would say that the Great Commission is the call to evangelism. But it's only a call to evangelism as we understand the deeper aspect of evangelism is discipleship as its real goal. Jesus doesn't want a bunch of infants, but he wants men and women that will grow up and mature and actually become part of the fulfillment of this great commission that he's given the church. 
discipleship actually goes beyond evangelism, although it really doesn't. It does in many of our minds. We would say, listen, I'm an evangelist. I'm going to go out Saturday at you know 10 o'clock, and I'm going to find someone, and I'm going to lead them to Jesus, and I'm going to pray with them, and now I've done my job. See, I thought that way. I remember Billy Joe Dougherty one time challenging me, saying, Steve, I, at that time I had a group called the Soul Patrol. He said, I hear nothing but that you guys are leading people to Christ everywhere. And I said, Billy Joe, it is awesome. God is using us so much. And Billy Joe said to me, Steve, where are they? And it was like, what do you mean, where are they? Well, they're wherever they are. I mean, that's not up to me. I'm an evangelist. It's your job, Billy Joe, to disciple these people. And I realized when I came out of that conversation that I hadn't gotten real about what the true Great Commission's all about. Jesus never said, go and make converts of the people that you talk to. It's to go into all the world and make disciples. And that's an interesting word. A disciple is a disciplined follower of Jesus. We weren't even interested in that, at least at that time. What I thought my job was is to go and proclaim the gospel, to lay hands on them, to move in the gifts. And I thought if they really get converted, well, then they're going to decide to go on with God. Listen, I've written here something that I think is very important in the middle of page 63. Find this in your manual. What I've written is this. Evangelism is the proclamation of the gospel with the goal of people believing in Jesus and what he did for us on the cross. And then I would add to this, discipleship is centered on biblical teaching and the continual spiritual nurturing which produces growth in obedience and character development in this disciple. And let me ask you, can you see that it's an artificial, you know, sort of a distinction that I make if I say evangelism is this part of it, and then discipleship is this part of it? Because the two go hand in hand. If I'm a disciple maker, if I'm an evangelist, if I'm a preacher of the gospel, it's just as critical for me to help these new believers get established in their faith. If you'll notice on the tabs on the abundant, or not abundant, excuse me, ambassadorsforchrist.net, which is where you are today website, I also have an entire manual, and I actually have a couple of them. The first one is called Finding the Rock. The second one is called Building on the Rock. Those are discipleship lessons, and, and it's really a training manual for new believers. And I just want to say this. If you've led someone to Jesus, I want to encourage you to get a copy of Finding the Rock and sitting down with that person and actually help them get established by studying the Bible. You see, this is the interesting thing. The word make disciple is the same word as teaching in Greek. You make disciples by teaching. Where the distinction isn't artificial is this. Evangelism is preaching. It's proclamation. The karuks proclaims the gospel message. The disciple maker teaches the new convert the simple truths that we that we lay a foundation with in discipleship in the Bible. And I've given you finding the rock, building on the rock. These are manuals that we have taken hundreds of people through. This is not like some untested you know, book I wrote on discipleship, we built a church and others have built churches using this as the basic foundation for discipleship. And in fact, right now it's being used all over the world because I've, I've given it to other pastors and other church leaders in some of the conferences that we've done around the world. And I hear the same thing over and over again when they've taken the time to teach their new converts these lessons. It's amazing what happens. They get connected to the church 
and they grow, and one day they grow to maturity where they can go do the same thing for others. Listen, we need to get serious about growing people and bringing them up to full maturity in Christ. And again, the ultimate goal is not just to make a disciple. It's to reproduce a disciple maker. What God has done in you, you get to go do in the life of somebody else, where they now become an active builder of the church. And for you pastors that are there, I want you to understand this. People are not going to grow to full maturity sitting there listening to you teach. They need to get actively involved in the disciple-making process. And if you would raise up men, not just to passively sit and listen, but to actively get involved, your church is going to blow up. And I mean in a good way. People will come, people will get involved. You see, not everyone has a real evangelistic fervency in their heart to go out and proclaim the gospel. There are many in the church that God is going to raise up with a teaching and discipleship-oriented gifting. And what I need to do is identify my evangelists, and I need to identify my disciple-makers, and put both of those different groups of people to work And you know what begins to happen in that church? It begins to grow. We begin to conserve the harvest. You see, it's one thing to get prepared for the harvest by training and equipping people to know how to make disciples. Pastor, if I were you, I would encourage you to buy a whole bunch of copies of Finding the Rock, using it with your key leaders, and then when we do an evangelistic outreach, I've got a bunch of people in place ready to make disciples of the people that get born again and join the church, and if I'll raise them up and I'll constantly cast the vision before them that one day they're going to be disciple makers, Well, you know what happens. It begins to grow. Like Paul that was teaching Timothy, who is going to teach faithful men that would teach others also. We see four generations of discipleship just in that one verse of 2 Timothy 2.2. And it should be the pattern of how we're going to build and grow our churches and our ministries. Amen? When people who accept Jesus, listen to this statement, this is tried and true, when people who accept Jesus do not grow beyond that initial starting point, almost a hundred percent of the time, they're going to abandon their profession of faith, and they're going to be hardened to the church and to Jesus by the experience that they've had. People want to grow. They want to become new. Their minds need to be transformed. Their lives and their habits and their visions and their values, all of it needs to change. And this is what we do based on our discipleship. If you'll flip over to page 64, listen to this. Gospel preaching is preaching the message that centers on Jesus' life, death, burial, and resurrection. Disciple-making is presenting the biblical truth that Jesus commanded us to present with the result of them being baptized in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit and teaching them to observe all things that Jesus has commanded. I've put a pretty bold statement here. When you hold an evangelistic event, it's not how many people that came to the altar that you should count to see the real impact of the event. If you're a counter and and numbers matter a whole lot to you, why don't you count the people that were baptized and then even sign up and participate in the new believers classes or small groups or Bible studies that you have established? That's the real impact that you're making in your discipleship in the church. Amen and amen. The primary means of disciple-making is Bible teaching. And I want to say one more thing again today as I'm just hitting the highlights of this lesson. Look up Hebrews chapter 6, 
verses 1 and 2. Whoever wrote the book of Hebrews, and I'm, I'm not convinced that I know who that was. I know it was God. And I know it was authored by the power of the Holy Spirit and through the authority of the Holy Spirit. In the book of Hebrews, we find something very interesting. The author says, let us go on to perfection, on to maturity, really is another good way of translating Hebrews 6.1. Not laying again a foundation. Now listen, think about that word for a minute. Are we going to help people get a solid foundation that they build on? We're talking about going on to maturity, not laying again a foundation. And he lists six truths. Not laying again a foundation of repentance from dead works. If we're going to see people grow to maturity, to go on to maturity, they've got to get past their dead religious works. The, the works that we do that we think are going to earn us a position or acceptance in the eyes of God. Repentance from dead works. Where do I get this list? This is how the early church, th this is their curriculum, if you will what they base their discipleship on. And building on the rock, our second discipleship book, is completely based on this curriculum. Listen to the second thing the author of Hebrews says, not laying again a foundation of repentance from dead works and of faith in God. If we don't teach people how to grow in their faith, how to build their faith, how to read their Bible, because faith comes by hearing and hearing by the Word of God, they're never going to grow to full maturity. And then he goes on to say, and the doctrines of baptisms. How many of you realize there's water baptism, there's spirit baptism? I need to train the new convert so that he can operate in the power of God and, and, and to follow Jesus in water baptism and what that means to lay my life down. I identify with Christ in his life, death, burial, and resurrection where I'm crucified with Christ and that I'm resurrected with Christ to newness of life. But then also the baptism in the Holy Spirit where God said that I would receive power when the Holy Spirit came upon me. I'm telling you, we've got good news for people, and we have a track to train people on. He also adds a fourth thing here, the laying on of hands. It's amazing. Here we are in a church age where the church is probably split on every single one of these doctrines. And yet that was the foundation of the early church, and it's why they changed the known world and literally Turn the world upside down. Or should we say they turn the world right side up? Because they knew and they built on a foundation of some of the most simple biblical teachings. And all of their new converts were trained in these things. They taught about the resurrection of the dead. Let me tell you something. How would people live in our churches if they knew one day they were going to be raised from the dead and then have eternal judgment? Because that's what the scripture teaches. You see, it's important that we understand. People must be trained in these elementary doctrines, in these elementary teachings. This is how you make disciples. You teach them the word of God. And I want to encourage you again. If you don't have a great foundational teaching, why don't you start with ours? And if you want to change it, why don't you change it? Why don't you customize it? Make it what you want it to be. Put your name on it. I don't care. Let's train people so that they can begin to grow and mature in their relationship with God. And then going on to perfection. Let us go on to perfection. I actually have a book that we call On to Maturity. It's our third discipleship manual. It's how we built abundant life. And I want you to know again, uh, the goal in evangelism, is not just to talk someone into praying a prayer, but it's to bring them the full maturity in Christ, something we can do. Some of us are going to be more gifted at preaching. Some of us are going to be more gifted at teaching. Some of us are going to be more gifted at disciple-making. 
the entire church is needed because the entire church's gifts are needed to bring people up to full maturity. I believe that if you will purpose in your heart not just to preach the gospel to someone, but to see them brought up to full maturity, that you're going to have a more fruitful, more rewarding Christian life and more fruitful evangelism than you've ever been part of up to this time. Listen, the power of God is there with you to make disciples. Let's take advantage of the opportunity we have, of the curriculums that we have, and it's not about a curriculum. I'm not teaching people lessons. I'm teaching people how to walk with God. And that's something that I've experienced. It's something that you can do. I want to encourage you today as I close, become a disciple maker, not just an evangelist that preaches the gospel and then leaves the harvest out there ungathered. Gather them in. Bring them in. You might need to start a small group in your house with all the people that you lead to Jesus. And who knows, it might even become a church. That's exactly what happened with us. Hey, listen, it's been great to be with you today. God bless you and happy disciple making.